Right. It's seven o'clock in the evening. It is the 22nd of September, 2007. And I'm sitting here in my dining room in a house in Coventry, England. And my name is Derek Tiff, and I think I have come up with a completely new approach to travelling backwards in time that may be easier than the current Actually, my dog's just come to say hello to me. Hello Buffy! Bloody don't get them down! Hold off! On your bed! I know I should have fed the dog before I did this. On your bed! On your bed! Now! Right. I've got that little bit over and done with. Where was I? Right. The conventional way that scientists believe that you can travel backwards in time is to exceed the speed of light. Uh, this can be done by exceeding the speed of light, going faster than the speed of light, which would need an infinite amount of energy and is therefore impossible. Or, well, you could have no mass. If you had no mass, you could travel at the speed of light or beyond the speed of light because to have no mass, travelling at that speed wouldn't need to be created to turn into any what happens. Talking rubbish, talking rubbish, talking rubbish. Rewind, 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 rewind. Right. Or, forget the last bit. You can go through a wormhole, which means you take a shortcut from one place to another. So you get from one place to another instantly and completely bypass the middle and you get there before the light does anyway. Um, forget all that, because I've thought of a different way. Instead of going faster than the speed of light, what's the other extreme? Zero! Zero, which means not going at all. Right? Uh, we all move at a rate of one second per second through time. We are all time travellers. Unfortunately... Hello! Dad's just walked in. You are right? Say hello. Hello. He's just bringing a pen back. He's been writing my daughter's birthday card. Anyhow, the dog's back again. She wants her food. No, on your bed. Right, back to the important part. Um, how about going slower than zero? And I'm not talking about going backwards here, because backwards is just forwards in another direction. No, I'm not about going slower than zero. Now, oh yes, we were, I was talking about going forward at one second per second. That is due to our planet moves around the sun, our sun moves, moves around its part of the galaxy, the galaxy moves around its part of the universe. And all of that motion and things creates a particular time, one second per second. Uh, what we perceive as one second per second. I mean, the other animals uh, perceive it as uh, they see us moving around like this. I mean, if you're a housefly, you'd, have you ever tried swatting a housefly? It can tell you're coming hours before you've hit it, even though it's only a second to you. Bastards. Anyhow. Travelling backwards. We need to stay absolutely still, which means we need to find a part of the universe which has absolutely no gravitational influence whatsoever, so it can't pull us in any direction. By the way, I was reading a book by Brian Greene and Mikhail Kaku. Uh, two books, one by Brian Green, one by Mikhail Kaku, and I came to the conclusion, or I think it probably stated somewhere, that uh, acceleration is exactly the same as gravity. Uh, this is rather important because uh, acceleration is um, the way it, it, it creates time 
the dog's back again. Buffy, on your bed! Uh, but it uh, influences a body's time, sort of. Uh, I'm not making this very clear, am I? But it's my theory, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, going slower than zero. Find a part of the universe where nothing happens, no gravitational pull or whatever, and basically you're stuck there. Nothing happens to you because it never will. You're stuck until some gravitational thing comes along and starts pulling you and then you start experiencing time. Now, I've heard of this stuff called dark matter, uh, which is something to do with anti-gravity. Now, dark matter, anti-gravity, anti-gravity, wouldn't that make your acceleration negative? And if your acceleration was negative, would you, you wouldn't go, well, hopefully, I mean, this is sort of a question, really, wouldn't you go back? You wouldn't go backwards. Would you actually go backwards in time instead of going backwards in space? That's a question. And wouldn't that require a lot less energy than trying to go the other way, faster than the speed of light? If that was the way, and if that proved to be true, could I please be remembered on this video, which I've said my name and the date and the time and everything at the start, as being the inventor of time travel? Please, please, please. Okay, it's just a thought, but uh, going slower than zero. Now, couldn't also anti-gravity be used to counteract the effects of all the gravity and stuff that's actually taking us around the sun and the moon and the earth and whatever is influencing us. Uh, you'd have to create a lot of it, but that would be another way of travelling backwards in time. Also another way. Uh, anything with mass, apparently, can't travel faster than the speed of light. Photons apparently don't have mass, so they travel at the speed of light. Could something have negative mass? If something had negative mass, could that travel backwards in time? Maybe? Is there any way I could convert my body into negative mass? Go backwards in time? Nah, I'm happy with the way things are. That's it! Bye-bye. I'm going to finish my beer now. If I can find the pause button. I found it. Bye.